Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now, recently I asked you all what your favorite part of Jurassic Park 3 was, and an overwhelming majority of you really came out to show your love for the Spinosaurus. Back when that movie first came out, the animal was all that anyone could talk about. Now that we've gotten some details into its history and creation, courtesy of the DPG, this titanic predator has somewhat of an even more impressive identity within the context of the third film. How many of you think that we'll get a chance to see it again? Maybe in more expanded material, or even a new film? Let me know in the comments down below, guys. Really interested to hear what you have to say. InGen was always hard at work during the 1980s and 90s. Their ambition to create the dinosaurs that would populate Jurassic Park drove them to produce massive titans like the Brachiosaur, as well as small yet equally impressive creatures like the Compsognathus. Their process of mining DNA from fossilized amber and completing the organism's missing gaps with that of a frog gave way for a wide variety of species to be created. But it should come to no surprise that this would prove a very delicate and time-consuming process for Hammond's incredible genetics team. During the events of the Isla Nublar incident in 1993, many creatures would have their DNA mined and processed, but not yet fully completed. These dinosaurs were being planned for Jurassic Park, but unfortunately left abandoned after Dennis Nedry chose to cut the power and attempt to steal valuable company assets. One of these dinosaurs that was being created by InGen happens to be the Allosaurus. As of now, we know that this theropod only had 12% of its DNA sequence completed, making it the carnivore that InGen had the least amount of material to work with. Now, of course, Mizrani would ultimately be able to clone the dinosaur for exhibition within Jurassic World sometime later. However, the Allo has actually made several prominent appearances inside of the franchise before the events of our newest films. The first time we would get to see the Allosaurus within this series would actually be with Within a toy line for the Lost World. It came packaged with a Dino Damage Medical Center and had four removable parts. The animal's color scheme would be somewhat similar in appearance to the one that it would receive for the video game of the same name. This Allosaurus resided on Isla Sorna and could be found within dark caves near the Hunter's Base Camp. They'd come and attack the player during the Tyrannosaurus levels and put up a pretty good fight. This was due to their smaller size yet impressive speed and agility which they'd use to dodge the Rex's attacks. A few years later, we'd get to see the animal make another video game appearance in the fan-favorite park simulator, Operation Genesis. Here, the Allos were excavated from Africa and behaved quite docile compared to their other theropod kin. Interestingly, this version of the dinosaur was based on the species Allosaurus tendigurensis, which has recently been theorized as having been more along the lines of one of the Carcharodontosauridae rather than your average Allo. Now, the next time we'd see any Allosaurs within the JP franchise would actually be seven years later in 2010. Here, the dinosaur was featured within the comic book storyline, Jurassic Park Redemption, and its presence came complete with a reference to the famous 1969 stop-motion adventure titled The Valley of Guanji. Allosaurus wouldn't be done with comic book stories just yet, though, as it also appeared in the next JP story that came out soon after, Jurassic Park Dangerous Games. Here, the Allosaurus looks radically different than any design seen before, and it's actually forced to fight against a pack of feathered velociraptors that play a major role in Dangerous Game's story. This design is notable for its similarity with how we would eventually get to see it represented on film, with the canon release of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. However, before that film was even a possibility, the Allosaurus would make one last major non-canon appearance. 2011 saw the creation of a sophisticated Allo dinosaur toy that was noted with having the most points of articulation for any Jurassic figure ever made, as well as having a classic dino damage injury in the shape of Isla Sorna. This would eventually get released two years later in 2013 to great fanfare and positive response. Finally, the dinosaur would receive one last toy incarnation in 2015's Jurassic World, again looking far different from any design that had come out before. Now, Fallen Kingdom's Jurassic Predator will get its first big screen debut for the series in just three short months. In canon, it's an animal that was planned to be an attraction way back during the original Jurassic Park's run, but one that would unfortunately be forced to wait over 20 years to get its proper introduction. It's a dinosaur that I think a lot of people have loved for a long time, and one that actually has a pretty significant role within the context of a few of the film's expanded stories. When Fallen Kingdom is released, we'll get our first great look at what this kind of dinosaur can really do within a Jurassic film. 
Now before I go, I want to thank my game wardens, as well as my engine executives. I'd also like to thank my park workers and engine hunters as well. And Teridus, it's really cool to have you pledge this kind of support to the channel, man. And it means the world that all of you continue to help me make this thing bigger and better every day. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching this video, and hope that you all enjoy today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys. And as always, take it easy.